So the key to filming stuff in slow motion is to have a high frame rate. So 60 frames per second, 120, 240 frames per second if your camera has it, which most don't. And if we go by the 180 shutter rule, then your shutter speed should actually be double your frame rate. So film at 60 frames per second, then have your shutter speed at 1 over 120, and so on. Having said that, you can also do something called overcranking. So if you film at 60 frames per second, you can still over crank your shutter speed to 1 over 240 or 1 over 400, and you'll get a slightly different look. Either way, the higher the frame rate, the slower and smoother your slow motion can be. The trade-off is that most cameras can only record higher frame rates at lower resolutions, i.e. in 1080 and not 4K. Now, in order to edit the best looking slow motion footage, the key thing to understand is that it's just a relationship between the time base of your sequence and the frame rate that you filmed at. So in order to determine your time base, all you have to do is go up to sequence and under sequence settings, you'll find time base right here. So mine is 29.97 frames per second or 30 frames per second. The other main one that people use is this one right here, 23.976 or 24 frames per second. As far as your frame rate goes, you can find it in your project bin listed beside each clip. So these two clips right here were filmed at 24 frames per second, where these ones were filmed at 60 frames per second. Now that we understand these numbers, we're going to use them to determine the optimum slow motion speed that we can make any clip. All you have to do is divide the time base by the frame rate. That'll give you a decimal, which you're going to convert into a percentage that gives you your optimum slow motion speed. Just be aware that if you use a percentage lower than that to make your clip even slower, you're likely to make your footage look jittery or maybe introduce unwanted artifacts, depending on the settings you choose, which I'll show you a little bit later. Okay, so there's actually four different ways that you can make your footage slow motion in Premiere Pro. The first way is to interpret your footage. All this means is that Premiere is gonna automatically convert all of your clips, regardless of frame rate, into their optimum slow motion speed. So if you don't wanna do all the math that I just showed you, then this is a good method, but only choose this one if you know you're gonna have the footage play at slow-mo for the entirety of the clip. If you want some of it to be at regular speed, or if you want it to be even slower, then don't use this method, because it's actually gonna change the frame rate right here and the duration of the clip right in your project files. So to interpret footage, all you have to do is select all the clips that you want to interpret, so anything that has a faster frame rate than your time base, just take note, this one's 29.97, so 30 frames per second, and it's a 15 second clip. This one's 60 frames per second, and it's also a 15 second clip. Now all you have to do is right click, go up to modify, over to interpret footage, and then just click this, assume this frame rate, and change it to the desired time base. So 23.976 in this case, and then just go down and hit OK. You'll notice that all of them that I selected were changed to 23.976 to match the time base and the duration has changed. This one went from 15 to 18, this one up to 37. But just remember, only use this method if you want it to play at this exact speed for the whole clip. And to be honest, I never use it. The second and most convenient way to put something in slow motion is just to right click and go up to speed slash duration or go command or control R. That'll bring up the clip speed slash duration window where you can change speed and duration right here. So let's take a look at speed right here. Right now, this clip is at 100%. It's six seconds long. We can see it at six seconds right here. If I change speed to something simple like 50%, at half the speed, the duration of the clip doubled to now 12 seconds. If I click OK, we can see it happen down here too. So now it's at 12 seconds. And if I play it, it's going to be in slow motion for both video and audio. If you want to approach it from the duration side, like let's say you need your clip to be 10 seconds. So this is hours, minutes, seconds, and frames right here. So if you wanted 10 seconds, you can just go in here and put in 10 seconds, and then it's going to change the speed to match. If we click OK, we can see that it goes to exactly 10 seconds. If you don't want these things to change together, so let's say you want your clip at 50%, but you also want it to be six seconds, you don't want it to change from this length, then just unclick this chain, then put it in at 50%. You can see the time didn't change. Now when we click OK, it's going to make this slow motion, but it's going to keep it at six seconds. Down here, these two things are pretty obvious. If you click this one and OK, your clip is just going to play backwards in reverse. 
Whereas this one right here is gonna try and maintain the audio pitch of the clip. You're gonna hear it tries to make it fast, sound go fast. like it normally would with the proper pitch. I think it's terrible. Now, before I explain ripple edit shifting trailing clips, I want you to take note that if you put something in slow motion, but you have a trailing clip after it, it's gonna get blocked. So the duration says over 12 seconds, almost 13 seconds here, but when I click okay, the video is gonna get blocked because there's a clip in the way, but you can see the audio went the full distance. But now when I click ripple edit shifting trailing clips and click okay, it's gonna move everything that was after it down to make space for this new clip. One scenario where this comes in handy is when you only want part of your clip to be in slow-mo and the rest to be in regular speed. To do this, just move your playhead to where you want the slow-mo to begin, then use your razor tool to slice your clip at that point, then find the spot where you want the slow-mo to end or where you want it to kick back into regular speed, slice again, go back to your selection tool, and then right-click, go into speed slash duration, select your speed, so I'm gonna go 25% this time, and then make sure to click Ripple Edit Shifting Trailing Clips, click OK, and you can see it moves the rest of the clip over. So now when we watch it, it goes to slow-mo here and then back to regular speed. And then there's time interpolation, which only becomes a factor when you make your footage slower than the optimum slow motion rate. Because when you slow a clip too much, you essentially stretch it out beyond the frames you have available. For example, slowing a 30 frames per second clip down to 50% speed. This creates gaps between the original frames, meaning Premiere now has to figure out how to fill in the spaces where there are frames that are missing. Unlike a clip that was filmed with a higher frame rate that even when stretched out, still has enough frames to fill in each spot of the chosen time base. But just know that Premiere has three different options for applying time interpolation, starting with the default setting, which is frame sampling. This is where Premiere duplicates existing frames in order to fill in the gap, which typically results in jittery or choppy footage. The second option is frame blending, where now Premiere adds a crossfade between the frames to fill in the gap, which generally causes a ghosting effect. Last but not least, there's optical flow. This is where Premiere uses the information and details in the surrounding frames in order to predict or artificially create new frames. The problem is this can often produce unwanted digital artifacts. The main thing to note here is that optical flow will struggle with fast moving subjects, very detailed backgrounds, and or low contrast images. So in order to get the most out of the effect, make sure to film in higher resolutions like 4K with an overcrank shutter speed like 1 over 250 and especially with faster frame rates like 60 frames per second or faster. Just know that if you select frame blending or optical flow, when you go to preview your clip, it's gonna look the same as frame sampling. It's gonna look all jittery. That's because you have to render it first. So just click on your clip go up to sequence, down to render selection. Then once it's done rendering, you'll be able to preview it properly. The third way to make something slow motion is to use the rate stretch tool. So right now I'm on my selection tool. If I click on the ripple edit tool, left click and hold it, you can see the rate stretch tool is right here. You can also, if you're clicked on something, just hit R on your keyboard and that'll give you your rate stretch tool. You're gonna use this one if you just wanna fill in gaps. So let's say you have this clip right there and you're like, I don't really care how slow this clip is. I just need it to be this exact duration. Well, then you just go to the edge of the clip, click and stretch it out. And then you can see it's gonna change it right there to 66.55% and that just fills in the gap. But just know that if you stretch your clip out really far and make it really slow so that it's maybe choppy in the playback, all you have to do is go back into speed slash duration. You can see your speed right there and mess with time interpolation as you see fit to see if you can make it look any better. The fourth option for slow motion in Premiere is time remapping or speed ramping. Use this method when you want smooth speed transitions throughout the duration of your clip. For time remapping, I'd start by expanding the layer that your video is on by hovering over this little line right here, clicking, and sliding it up. This gives you more room to work with on your clip. Then just right click on this little effects thing in the top corner, go to time remapping and change it to speed. That'll put a white line right down the middle here and that's where we're gonna put our keyframes to change our speed throughout the clip. Now you can do that in two ways. You can either click on your clip and then add keyframes right here. So you'd 
go to where you want the slow-mo to start, for example, so right there, and you could click a keyframe to add that in right there, or you can hold Command or Control and click on the white line. Either way, it's gonna add these little bracket things that you see right here, and this is how we're gonna control the transition from one speed to the next. What these lines have done is actually separated this clip into different speed sections. So what I'm gonna do is just change the speed of this middle section right here. So do that, all I have to do is hover till I see this little up and down arrow thing, click, and then slide down to go slow-mo and slide up to make it go faster. So I'm gonna slide it down. You can see it's already expanding to make the clip longer or this section longer. And I'm gonna go down to about 20%. If I zoom out a little bit, you can see that the video expanded to be slower but the thing that sucks about this effect is that the audio does not transition with it. So if I play this, it's gonna go regular speed to slow-mo here for the video, but the audio is still playing regular. And then when it goes back to regular, it's gonna be off right there. Now, I'm gonna show you how to kinda of fix that later, but for now, I'm just gonna mute the audio because it doesn't matter for anything we're doing right now. Okay, so to manipulate the transitions, all you have to do is separate these little bracket things. Because right now, it's just going from regular speed and abruptly changing to slow-mo. But we don't want that. We want a gradual transition. So what you do is you click on a bracket and just slide it so you separate them. So you make this ramp now. So in this case, it would go regular speed and then slowly transition into slow motion here. But you can also change how this works as well by just clicking on one of the brackets. You get these little handles and you can pivot this to now make it more of a ramp. So it's gonna go regular speed and then slowly start to transition, then go fast into slow-mo, and then gradually drift into the speed that you want. I would suggest at this point you watch your clip so you can see how that transition happens. If you want it to be slower, then just expand these out, either both of them or one of them, to change where the transition happens, or you click on a bracket and you might wanna change how the transition is happening by pivoting these handles. But just know that you can add as many of these in as you want. So maybe I can add another one right here, expand this one out, and maybe I put this in, you know, fast forward. Maybe I go here, add another one, crank this way down to 1% so it expands out, and you can, you know, mess with those. So now if we watch this, we go from slow-mo, ramps up to regular speed, goes really fast, and then boom, into one last slow motion. And once again, you can still mess with time interpolation. This time, just right click and go right here to time interpolation and pick the one that you think best fits your footage. As for fixing the audio, it's kind of annoying, but it is doable. So all I would suggest is going one transition at a time using your razor tool. I'd lock the video and then just slice right there and change it to the speed that the slow-mo part was. So if I go on here and right click and go to speed slash duration, this section was 20%. I'm gonna click okay. Then just go back to your razor tool, slice at the next transition, and then go back into speed duration and put it to whatever the speed for that section is and just keep going one section at a time. Then I would just make sure to go over to effects and go into audio transitions, into crossfades, and I just drag a constant power on these to help the audio kind of transition. So now when we watch it, you'll hear that the sound actually matches the speed of the video. So when it's slow, it'll sound slow, and when it's regular or fast, it'll sound like that. It's not gonna be perfect, but it'll be much better than it was before. If you wanna learn how to film and edit other change of speed effects like fast forward, frame hold, or reverse, make sure to check out the videos linked in the description below or on the screen right now.